hello everyone uh, welcome to the channel uh, my name is sagat and i am a product manager at paypal and today we have somyadeep ghosh who is also a product manager at paypal welcome somyadeep on the channel hey yeah, thanks sagat thanks a lot for having me i'm yeah, looking forward to the conversation today perfect Thank you. so unlike the other videos folks uh, this video is not about the interview experience this is a mock interview where i will be conducting i mean i will be the one who will be uh, the interviewee and somyadeep will be the one who will be conducting the mock interview so pretty nervous i don't know i have always been on the on the other side of the table talking to the other pms but yeah i think let's see how it goes so over to you somyadeep why don't you get started yeah thanks so much yeah do not be nervous i you have been doing a brilliant job for all the pm aspirants i'm pretty sure you are going to crack this interview pretty well yeah so let's get started so yeah so let's do a product design question which is one of the uh, question types which is asked in almost most of the interviews right yeah. so uh, let's do this right let's get started with so why don't you go ahead and design a communication app for the children of them yeah okay so uh, somebody for this particular collaboration can we i just share my screen and we can collaborate our thoughts and ideas Sure, sure. That would be great. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah, I can. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the question is design a communication app for children, right? That's right. Yeah. Perfect. So, I do have a couple of clarifying question. Ah, uh, number one is. what do you mean by communication here uh, so you know there are various modes of communication right via speaking mm -hmm. via texting mm -hmm. are we like uh, focusing on any particular type of communication mode here yeah, uh, why don't you go ahead and assume like um, yeah it can be any communication type right texting video chatting anything so okay. uh, why don't you go ahead and assume right. texting video call voice it can be anything right okay right uh okay now when we talk about children right uh, do we have a particular age group here that we are trying to define over here in in terms of children yeah it it's like you can assume uh, the age group to be yeah school going uh, children yeah okay so about something like 7 to 15 year old yeah okay so 7 to 15 is the age group that we are targeting over Mm -hmm. perfect and and uh, so i see you have already uh, mentioned a school going so that is the kind of persona also we will be targeting for this particular uh, problem yes yes yeah go ahead cool and uh, yeah and and most important thing right what's the objective of uh, creating this communication app what are we looking for are we uh, so just to uh, check on the other side right are we a company who is trying to build up a new communication app and what's the objective behind this yeah we are we are trying to build up a new communication app and for the end product or the problem we are trying to solve you can assume like just think about what uh, a communication app basically does right what needs it fulfills or what problem it is actually trying to solve so you can take a cue from the other apps and probably try devising uh, a problem sure statement Yeah. Sure. So I think uh, if I talk about other communication apps, right? Uh, there are so many different communication apps, and popularly WhatsApp is one of them, right? Although there are other social media applications, uh, communication app. If I take an example of WhatsApp and the key, uh, you know, things they their objective is something driving the engagement part of it. So for this mm -hmm. problem, do we also uh, assume the same objective of engagement? Yeah, please go ahead. Got it. And are we uh, looking at any particular geography for this case? Mm, you can just assume, right? Okay. So okay, I can consider any geography, right? So is it fine right. for this scoping of this problem? We consider ge geography as India. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the, I just wanted to simplify, like. Uh, The reason I am selecting uh, India as a geography because of uh, two major reasons. Number one is the 
I'm, I'm from India, so I'm more familiar towards the you know, communication and the behavior of children. So that's the number one uh, reason. And number two is the number of children who are adopting to this new technologies and applications, right? So that's a huge spike in this case, and especially from the COVID when everything is becoming online. So I think, uh, you know, uh, in that way, I think India would be one of the uh, better market things to look into. Got it. Got it. Yeah, makes sense. Good. And and last, uh, you know, do we have any sort of uh, constraints that we have to be aware of while building designing this? Uh, nothing. Like you are you are free to assume anything. So we we assume like we are, we don't have ample amount of time resources to take care. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, thanks. I think this pretty much it. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think before I move into the further things, uh, final assumptions or any scoping down is the app, right? When we talk about app over here, are we talking about a uh, mobile application or a smart app, which can be uh, plugged into other devices? So what, or it's a web app. So is there any particular thing that we're trying to accomplish with the app over here? Uh, yeah, great question, Sudan. So, why don't you go ahead and uh, like probably phase it out, right? So, what do you think? Like, probably for the first phase, you do you want to go the mobile route or do you want to go uh, web app route? So, I leave that to you. Why don't okay. you go ahead and uh, take this time? Okay. Sure, mobile, web, uh, anything. So, yeah, let's keep it open, and uh, as we proceed, we we can further uh, you know scope it down accordingly. Cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, can I take? A minute or so just to pause and structure my thoughts and how I will be approaching this process. Sure. Good. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, Samir, this is what I'm thinking of approaching it, right? So, we have already um, have asked a bunch of clarifying questions. We know what the objective looks like. So, yeah, uh, next is I'm going to look into uh, the user personas. I know you have already mentioned uh, school going students as one of the age group and all, but I further want to uh, dig into the uh, user persona and what can be the different kind of uh, users will be there under this, uh, followed by I'm going to be looking into a few of the uh, user journeys and pain points uh, where I'm going to understand, you know, what kind of communication apps they are using today, uh, what their day-to-day -day routine look like, what's their need of communicating to the different other folks. So that is one thing and uh, I'm going to look into and pain points as well, uh, followed by the, uh, yeah, uh, prioritizing one of the pain point and the user journey, uh, looking into a solution. Um, and followed by what can be few trade offs or challenges for implementing. Got it. Yeah. Makes and sense. last, Go just come up with a success metrics for this particular okay. problem. Okay. You want to add any particular thing uh, before I, I, I jump into? Uh, yeah. Feel free to add if you think I should include any more things in this approach altogether. Yeah, uh, this approach is really great, Sagar. So one, probably one question which I might have is, so as a product manager, right, it's also important uh, to hypothesize uh, some, sometimes, right? It, uh, like, it helps to have an initial hypothesis in place. So do you think in this uh, problem, like uh, you want to fit that anywhere or do you think like, will it actually make sense? Just want to hear your thoughts. Uh, no, I think I think fair point, Sam. Uh, when you when we definitely whatever we try to build, uh, we always have that hypothesis that hey, this particular thing will help us increase our uh, this mm -hmm. particular uh, you know uh, metrics mm -hmm. by this percentage. And uh, yeah, I would love to explore that angle as well as we proceed ahead. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, makes sense. So I will take another probably thirty seconds uh, or one minute just to you know come up with the user personas over here. Sure, sure, yeah.
Yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, if I just thought about three of the user personas, uh, you know, uh, so there are various way of, you know, defining the different segments of users, uh, especially when we are talking about school going kids, uh, school going children who are in India geography. So it can be either, you know, the ways they are going into, I mean, the kind of school they are going into, is it a H English medium school, Hindi medium school, a local school, right? Regional, that's another way of doing it. Uh, other ways of segmenting is something, uh, go doing it via uh, classes wise, right? This seven to 15 age group is a huge group. So I think that is another way of dividing those particular things. Is there any particular preference do you have? Uh, uh, just wanted to check in with you or I'm free to assume any of the way I wanted to approach. Well, you're free to assume, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I will just write based on, uh, you know, how should I say the uh, kind of school or based on the uh, class where, where they are studying. So when I talk about kind of school, I think, again, this is in India. So most of our schools are either English mediums or uh, Hindi medium, or these are the local, uh, uh, local medium where we have uh, mainly several uh, different local languages being as a board of medium. I think, yeah, the second way is based on the class uh, where they are studying, right? So it can be, if I talk about age group of seven to 15 years, they might be somewhere in class fourth, so that is uh, fourth class to I think six, uh, seven to eight is another class, and the uh, you know ninth and tenth. These are the another two class. So so these are the two popular kind of you know uh, students and the segments that we have over here. And uh, yeah, also do you have any preference on uh, on this particular out of the three type of schools? Do we have any particular preference on uh, picking up any particular uh, user segment, or we can go ahead with any of all the three types? You can segments? go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, so for this, I think let's go ahead and select uh, you know the English medium school uh, as mm -hmm. one of the major English uh, major uh, students. So this is how our problem is shaping up into. So we have to design a communication app, uh, which is being used by the uh, children who goes to English medium school. And yeah, let's see how, how those things gonna look like. Uh, this is from the student's perspective, right? Now, when we're talking about schools, there are other entities and personas which will also come into picture, right? So if I just have to list, this was all about children persona. We have a school persona as well. And then we have a parent persona who will be actively participating because communication is, is a two way. It's not a only children to children. It can be children to parents, children to school. So we have to think about those angles as well. And, and whatever we are, you know, uh, we are driving and moving towards, we also have to, uh, you know, have to also look into a few of the pain points from the school and the parents side as well. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Uh, just wanted to take some pause and uh, check with you, Soumya, if if you are on the right track or you want me to cover anything else as well. No, no, that's uh, really great so far, Sadat. So before we get started, uh, yeah, I mean, before we proceed, so could you probably uh, talk a bit about the persona you chose, like uh, probably some of the characteristics this uh, persona has, what do you, uh, what do you think? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think, yes. Uh, fair point. So as we know that in for the children persona, we are uh, going ahead with the school and here, like not only children. So just to scope down the problem, we have selected as an English medium school. Uh, nothing as because, uh, you know, people, uh, children are tech savvy as well. They are tech savvy. They, uh, they are adopting to the new, they have a great learning mindset. I just don't want to uh, you know, uh, demean anyone on the kind of mediums they have on the education level they have. I just want to go ahead and pick one of the most famous different personas, which is widely uh, in India, which is in English as a medium. And and not only this, because 
this application right uh, might be uh, used worldwide also so that is might be another reason of that english medium school so that is what i chose here so if i talk about the children as a persona right few of the key objectives for us is definitely uh, when things have become online i think i need a way to communicate to my uh, peer students as well as i need a way to also communicate to my uh, teachers directly be there is for any assignments or anything else so i need that is what my uh, main goal is uh, that i'm trying to accomplish over here i will just write it as well uh, mm -hmm. so children uh, main goal is communicate with peer students and uh, you know also teachers right it can be for anything doubt clearing sessions or or any homework related things right any any sort of communications now school let's talk about this school right now if we talk about the kind of communication we have over here uh, most of the communications are via telephone email uh, that's that are the few of the common channels we have today right now uh, what are the things schools want to uh, ensure they have right they wanted to ensure that hey if there any particular notice which has to be uh, communicated to the teacher students and their parent we need an effective way of communicating right not sure how many uh, students will use an email or 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 you know how many parents will use the email but they want to send out that notice to everyone and also ensure that that notice is acknowledged right we have a holidays or we have came up with a uh, we came up with a new timetable right the way we uh, the i remember the school or teachers used to communicate is uh, through the diary right uh, that's a preferred way of communication when i was in school if anything has to be sent i had a note in the diary and that is how the things uh, students want to teachers want to uh, school wants to uh, communicate that way so that that is being acknowledged by their parents as well so their objective is uh, ensuring those come uh, notices or schedules are acknowledged by parents so just type it out over here main goal is to uh, communicate and get the acknowledgement over here right and again uh, as a parent right uh, me if i have to consider over this user persona the most important objective or the use case uh, of a parent is somewhere the main goal is i want to know what happening with my kid in the school be it a new subject or a new books or a fees all sort of thing it can be anything right i might not receive that note from a teacher which has been given to a student right i want some sort of more way of effective communication right so uh, that is my main goal is to know what's happening at the school and with my kid so does that sounds good somebody like just trying to uh, justify who are the different sort of users for this application and what are their main goals sorry yeah this makes sense perfect and uh, yeah i think i think let's let's uh, focus i think definitely this is something for children uh, so let's Uh, proceed ahead with this persona of children, and sure. as, as we go in the pain points, we'll also try to ensure how we can uh, fulfill few of the goals of the school and the parents, and build that effective way of communication. Does that sounds good? Sure, sure. Yeah, makes sense. Perfect. Uh, okay. Now the next is the user journey, short of thing. So I will take a few more minutes just to. come up with the user journey for the children okay 
So uh, yeah, let's let's look into it, right? Uh, let's talk about the user journey of a uh, of our children. Uh, so let's see. Uh, on a fine day, uh, when a children wakes up, uh, he or she goes to school, and uh, you know, when the school there can be many activities happen, and uh, and I'm just assuming this is when it's a normal scenario and not a COVID type. Uh, I think that should have been one of the assumptions in my initial things, but wanted to highlight that hey, COVID is gone and this is a happy scenario and students have started going to school again. Uh, let's see, that this is what happened. They go to school, they talk to teachers, they talk to other things, they do the activities, fine. I think they are sitting right uh, in the things, right? So one type of communication is communication within the school. They still communicate, right, in any thought of form of things, right? They have to uh, yeah, maybe... Just, uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt here, Sidham. Just one clarifying question. So, uh, so we are assuming that everything is back to normal and kids are going back to school, right? We are yes. talking the... Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, I the clarification. Okay. I, I realize I missed it. Uh, I should have clarified it. So, but I'm still... Yeah, no issues, no issues, yeah up here that uh, that is one assumption everything is back to normal and kids are going back to school so when we talk about the journeys right uh, communication can happen at any, any point while in school and outside the school right that are the two most important objectives right uh, inside school is something when you are bound to uh, on the guidance of teacher uh, outside school is something uh, Outside school is something you wanted to uh, maybe check in with your different teacher, friends, or other peer colleagues, right? So I think if I have to pick up any particular one, right? Uh, I think I'm going to focus on the journeys and the pain points of outside school, which means that, hey, the school hours is over. Now let's see how the kid or the children want to communicate with different ways, right? So that is one thing. So if I have to uh, figure out, come up with few pain points, right? Uh, like what are the different pain points today we have uh, outside the school? That is one thing I think I just want to list out, and then we we solution around it and ways to figure out those pain points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So number one pain point being, uh, you know, the communication from uh, teachers to teachers to parents, right? And what happens if children becomes the bridge here? So if you remember, I was speaking on the diary part of it. So most of the stu uh, students have their diaries where teacher writes a note, teacher wants it to uh, communicate to their parents, but that may or may not be shown to the, uh, you know, parents. This is what traditionally happens that, hey, uh, just get a signature. This is your number. You got a very low grade. Take a signature of your parent and show it to me the next day, right? That was one of the things. And children may or may not show it to the parent. And so that is the kind of use cases uh, or the pain points we are talking. It's like a three way different modes. Both are different, different. What is the uh, effective way of communication? We have no idea, right? That is number one thing. Number two is, uh, you know, uh, group discussions, uh, group discussions or or uh, or homework. This is a very interesting use case, and especially for children purpose, right? Uh, many a times when they are home, they have to do their homework. They may or may not go to tuitions. Or, or have a form study, but they still need to call each other and ensure that, hey, this is the problem we are facing and let's do a group call. Uh, I mean, uh, let's, uh, you know, have a way to figure out how we can have the same experience of doing the homework together at home also. Right. And, uh, and uh, yeah, another form of communication is during the holidays, right? If holiday season, uh, children want to uh, come up with some activities, group activities, fun activities, they want to go hang out with their friends, there is no way of getting that discussion, right? They always have to depend on their parents uh, for WhatsApp or phone call or those things, right? And 
parents want to talk to each other's parent and then they come up with a plan so you know just a uh, planning a uh, hangout during holidays that is another pain point of in general right so uh okay. wanted to take a pause and uh, check in with you like uh, is there any preference uh, what pain point you want me to focus in uh you can go ahead and assume yeah so i see you have broken down the pain points into both academic and non academic needs right. of the children right yeah okay Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. I think then, uh, in terms of that, right? I then focus on the academic portion only, and I like I want to focus on this particular thing, which is like, hey, how can we enable that group discussions uh, or homework, uh, you know, and ensure that way of communication? Because COVID is a great example. We have seen how right. children used to struggle a lot. Uh, spending their time in mm -hmm. Zoom calls, video calls, entire mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important we come up with a way uh, where you know we can easily take care of uh, their problem of doing the group studies and all offline, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. also wanted yeah. to uh, just wanted to ensure why I'm not selecting the other two pain points is because uh, there are still some ways when teachers. Uh, I can directly reach out to the parents as well in few scenarios, not via diary or email, but there are still some ways uh, parents are communicating directly to the teachers and teachers to the parents, right? So uh, mm -hmm. that is one thing. And and planning the uh, hangout during the holidays is too much dependent on parents. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if we come up with some sort of solutioning for that particular thing, I think. Uh, few of the challenges is the permission of the parents and uh, you know that is one important factor that will be there in, in in this particular thing so that's why i think i believe i think i want to focus on this group discussion or homework and wanted to come up with few solutions with that got it got it yeah perfect and uh, now the most important thing about your hypothesis right i think you told about uh, you asked about a hypothesis that we should be uh, focusing towards so what my mm -hmm. hypothesis is solving this pain point of group discussion will help in improving the uh, collaboration uh, also teach uh, children the few core skills like teamwork and in terms of the product right it will increase the engagement right and uh, the most important thing our main objective of this building the product for the engagement criteria this will yeah. also increase the engagement and help in adoption of the users this, since this is a new built user i think adoption is one more uh, important thing we have to drive towards it so that's my hypothesis in general that hey this will uh, lead in driving the adoption and uh, also teach uh, children collaboration skills mm -hmm. does that sounds good yeah yeah this makes sense just about right yeah go ahead perfect so yeah i'll just take uh, 30 more seconds uh, to you know come up with few solutions on how we can improve that group discussion and collaboration of children after the school sure sure yeah. okay uh so Swami, i think i came up with a couple of uh, solutions uh, and about its feature so but before uh, you know I, I jump into the solution part i think i wanted to call out this thing uh, for everyone that whenever we are building anything or designing anything for kids right or the children group this is a very special group and we also have to keep in mind about the interest there uh, so children are very fond of music colors contrast right so we have to design the product or the app in such a way that they are very much into it towards that so that aesthetic part is something we always have to keep in mind while uh, will, uh, making the solutions so based on it yeah my most important and the first solution is the hologram concept so what does that mean is 
right now we are doing a video call or a zoom call right we are restricted in a screen right just a small screen where we are talking it we are missing that real effect we want to achieve that reality as we had in the school and we want to take it to the outside school also so covid is gone but people are still very much uh, you know spectacle on um, meeting each other talk sending their feeds they are very much worried about that kid we all we are having that still a barrier but we also have to ensure that those uh, things are taken care way how we can still have that same level of engagement uh, before pre covid and continue the same i think hologram concept would definitely help you to uh, be part of the same room and talk to you as if we are just sitting inside me and just to explain what does that hologram means is hey uh, with the help of phone or smart tv the way i think how it will be designed will look into later but i think an image will be popping out in the virtual reality that what we see in most of the different movies and all and it's time that we uh, think about in that term to make the engagement more real that's the oh. number one uh, things that using the hologram concept okay. number two is uh, again the kind of gamification right uh, i think as i was talking about children are always uh, we have to keep in mind what their interest is and games is one of the thing uh, which we have just to take some example right we have heard about white hand junior uh, and, and many learning apps right the way they are gamifying their entire experience that's increasing the engagement and sticking the kids right a new company all together formed just for teaching coding to kids coding is thought to be a very boring concepts and all now if the in a similar application right we are also coming up with a gamification modes uh, that will not only help keeping the attention of the children but it will also make them a bit interest towards hey and this gamification can be as simple as that hey we start doing the homework and we just uh, see which people or which uh, things how they are preparing for their quizzes have the inbuilt life quizzes so that they study about they let's say they are studying a subject of general knowledge right with the help of the book uh, a quiz can be formed and during the sessions of virtual we have that uh, quiz options where we can see how we are performing so gamification quiz is something uh, would be a help in uh, boosting up those engagement and homework thing right. and the last is the uh, some sort of feedback loop or feedback or an um, analytics mechanism uh i think it's more of a solution it's a kind of a feature i would say of that application because we also want to ensure we also want to personalize the experience of every kid right what i mean that the application will also be able to give you the real time feedback based on let's say you're participating in a discussion you're getting a feedback that hey uh, you seems to be not much attentive or is there any problem we should uh, call so that kind of uh, uh, mechanism should be always be there so that it gives back the user a feedback loop and uh, always keep the things that hey it's time that hey you should complete your homework by this amount of time if you want uh, we can call this friend and you can just engage with them so that is kind of a feedback analytics or personalization loop i want to put it, it so that it will help give it external trigger to the uh children yeah um so very briefly can you probably talk about the hologram effect and gamification a bit more and tie it to how uh, these two are solving for a pain point which i understand this group discussion of homework sorry i think i missed those two like uh so could you briefly talk about these two sure so hologram concept right so yeah. as i was talking mm -hmm. about right what happened the current scenario if you have to come back home and do a group study or discussion you either meet up in a place right or you talk to a phone or you uh, do a zoom meeting right that's the current scenario with the hologram thing how it will happen that hey you are in your room you are in your home and it will uh, have a through the phone or smart tv or anything that particular 
uh, the image of the person will be popped out and it will be seen just as we two are sitting in the same room and doing the discussion right now as we are doing in the zoom meeting right imagine the hologram mm -hmm. and i can see just right in front of you sitting here and we are doing that same discussion so that's all about the hologram got part. it got it makes sense yeah thank you for that yeah and gamification was all about right uh, as i was talking that the interest of the student uh, we as most about the games and all so how can we just as the whitehead junior example i took how can we make the study experience also into gaming experience like hey did you complete your homework get 20 points perfect mm -hmm. and and hey do you need help help uh, your friend uh, somedeep and you get a uh, 20 oh. points out of it so how we are helping that other yeah. students and having that discussion so that's the entire uh, concept of gamification and quiz got it got it makes sense yeah. perfect uh yeah and uh before we just prioritize i mean uh, just look into the prioritization part or any particular challenges with this thing uh mm -hmm. you have anything you wanted to share so many uh, the, this has uh, so far been really great, so that, but uh, yeah, just one thing if you could probably elaborate a bit, or I'm not sure if you might have that in your agenda probably at the later time. So when we build something for kids or for that matter, anybody, right? Uh, so how are we also tackling the security of the kids, right? Because uh, the user group is at a tender age, like how are we uh, taking care of stuff like bullying and then so that kids don't get abused on the platform? Uh, do we have any... Uh, work around for that. Can you talk a bit about that as well? Sure, absolutely. I think I think I was about to add that in my trade off. Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Uh, no issues. Okay, so got it. I think I think let's look into the trade offs part of it. So uh, yeah, uh, so sure. one of the trade offs, as you actually called out, the security part of it, right? Uh, the security, privacy, and especially the kids. We have so many things coming on out in picture, like beauty for kids, uh, uh, Instagram for kids is what we are have been hearing a lot about right so it's very important right. to take care of it and one way to tackle would be having a filtering mechanism or a, you know command to the parents who are the prime uh, uh, house owner or the how, how should i say that they are the prime users and kids are one of the sub user sort of things so that is one thing we can give the remote in the hand of the parents who have the all control to the kids. I think although they are using it for education purpose, uh, it can be for academic purpose also for playing in hologram and all for so many long time, right? So you said the duration that, hey, you start your uh, studio, hologram studio for just one hour, please complete all your work activities and all. And that way we are definitely uh, taking care of uh, how much time they are spending over there so that's one mechanism give, give a remote to your parents okay so one of the another pain point or challenge i was thinking about uh you know trade-offs was the uh you know when we talk about the hologram concept it comes at a huge cost uh and it's a futuristic thing we really don't know what kind of hardware do we require are we enabling it in a mobile phone so how the hardware will further be changed of those mobile phones? Do we have to adopt a specific new type of devices for those things, right? We have no idea and that might incur the cost of it. So I think cost-wise is one challenge or trade-off I do see over here in this particular thing. Okay. And uh, yeah, just to speak about few success metrics, uh, few of the success metrics is definitely uh, there are product metrics and there are uh, so other sanity metrics right for example uh, if it's an application right we definitely will see how the adoption is being used adoption and activation what i mean is number of downloads uh, and it, it all will have a network effort so if my friend i am i am on that particular app i would want you to be also in that particular app so that we have that hologram sort of thing uh, and okay. effect into it. So number of downloads is one thing we, we have to look forward, followed by the activation rates. Uh, what I mean is the number of sign-ups, uh, how many number of sign-ups are happening, uh, be it a parent account or a kid's account. So that way is one thing we have to figure out the 
number of signups. Uh, if I talk about few of the in-house uh, matrices of the product, then we will also be looking at the number of uh, uh, calls or hologram for uh, studios, which has been uh, started every week. And finally, uh, the last thing would be, uh, you know, what is the duration of those uh, uh, discussions? Mm, no, this is perfectly fine. Yeah, makes total sense. So what do you think will be the most important metric or the North Star metric here? North Star metric is, again, we have to tie to our objective over here, which is, again, the engagement portion of it. So I think I think I would love to see this particular thing, right? The, the number of calls or the holograms uh, which were done every week. That is, and especially along with the duration of it. So combining this two, I would come up with the North Star metric for this particular uh, got it, got it. app. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, this was a really great discussion, Sukhat. Yeah, I think uh, we have almost covered all, uh, most of the points, but one one more thing probably you can take another two minutes to talk a bit about that. So as I understand, you, you, you have built this app, and I believe this is a mobile app. Like, first you'll be launching as a mobile app. So how are you looking to monetize it? Like, uh, you can just uh, talk about two or three pointers and talk about ways to monetize it. Okay, uh, monetization, we still have to brainstorm a lot, right? Uh, mm -hmm, right? Application for kids, as well as monetizing it, seems to be two both different things. Because even if we have buyers, uh, uh, like kids won't be the one who, will, who can actually pay for it. It will be all, the parents, right. obviously, who will be paying for it. So, uh, yeah, I think there might be a couple of, first of all, we have to take that very hard decision can we at least have the monetization point of view if not monetization then advertising advertisement is the best way of monetizing it for example there are courses right. for kids and all that mechanism of monetization is what i think i will put into my perspective instead of asking the money from the users i think i gonna make it kind of an ad sort of things uh, for the kids Got it, got it. Makes sense. Yeah, this was a really great discussion, so that, Yeah, that is all I had. Now, yeah, over to you. Like, I know this was a really great discussion, but uh, before I talk about like a few nuances and aspects of the conversation, like probably, uh, do you want to talk about some things? Yeah. No, I think that was this was a great discussion, Shomidip, and I, I think uh, I did realize there are a few things I could have done better, especially uh, clarifying a few more things like, hey, is it a COVID scenario or not non-COVID scenario? That was a major miss which I did, but later point I came, came and figured it out. But uh, yeah, I really uh, enjoyed talking to you and, and yeah, over to the feedback. Would love to hear what were your thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. thanks, Agatya. I too enjoyed the discussion quite a lot. Those were like some innovative solutions and ideas you put forth on the table yeah yeah you were right to some extent right uh so so that was a very big problem we started off with right just a communication app for the kids it can be a lot of things can will, is it a standalone app will it be a feature in an LMS kind of a platform or it can be a lot of things right so yeah you did ask quite a few good clarifying questions to summarize the scope yeah one of the points that you just spoke about covid versus non-covid and uh Right now, we are seeing, right, like due to the COVID situation, most of the schooling, everything is remote and how communication apps, uh, primarily WhatsApp is coming to play. So that was one angle which you could have uh, explored a bit more to make it much more relatable, right? But yeah, you were right on that. Yeah. And yeah, so you'd summarize the scope initially. One thing which I really liked was after you summarize the scope and spoke about the user persona, right? And for the user persona whom, for whom you will be going to solve this problem for you actually summarized and reiterated the problem statement that was a very good uh, practice which i would recommend uh, everyone to follow what this does is actually if the interviewer is like not following exactly it probably is not on the same page right this reiterating the problem statement actually gets both the parties on the same page so that was a very important thing uh, and a very good thing that that is something which i really like then geography you actually clarified your assumption right 
So why you chose India? So that was a very uh, uh, good thing to do, right? And when when you were talking about the pain points, user journey is another very good thing which you have done. Like charting out the user journey actually makes it much easier to uh, divide the pain points, right? At which point in the user journey the main problem uh, uh, is there. So that is one important technique which is really good in finding out the pain points. And when you spoke about the solutions, so one thing which I was trying to get when I asked you, like, how does the hologram effect and the gamification tie back to our uh, goal, right? Yeah, in the second instance, you actually spoke and it was much more clear that this is the solution, this is how this hologram is actually helping in res uh, resolving for the group discussion uh, and workshop problem for the kids, right? That is one important thing because this is a long discussion, right? And even in a real time interview, the discussion might be pretty long. So whenever you talk about the solution, it's, it always helps to actually be crystal clear that this is the solution and an additional statement of, so this is the solution and this is going to help the main pain point or this is going to solve the main problem in this way. That really helps. And I also saw your solutions actually tied back to your initial hypothesis, which was really good. good. Yeah, those were some of the things you did brilliant. Obviously, yeah, this was almost near perfect, if I'd say, but there are some things which probably initially, uh, yeah, yeah, do you have anything to say before that? No, no, I think I would love to hear what I could have done better. So yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that was a uh, good point which you brought up initially in the initial phases of the discussion about the goal and we spoke about engagement, right? But I did not get uh, that much of a sense that we defined engagement. It was still not clear to me what engagement was. But again, like when you were talking about the user persona before that, I believe we spoke a bit about engagement, but it could help if it comes in the beginning of the conversation, right? So beginning of the conversation or beginning of the discussion, I think mainly should be focused about clarifying the scope and narrowing down the scope as much as possible, right? So defining the engagement would have helped there what actually we mean by engagement, right? And when you also talk about a hypothesis, it's better to tie it to a metric, key metric or a North Star, what, whatever you may call it, right? That is how I uh, I, I see it. When you, whenever you define a hypothesis, right, it helps if you talk about a metric, right? Other than that, yeah, the COVID versus non-COVID was something which you could have worked about a bit more. And that security aspect, I was thinking when it will come, when it will come. Yeah, that is why I wanted, I was a bit more interested in knowing how you will tackle the security uh, uh, perspective in that, which you obviously covered well in the trade-off. And one final point, which I would like to call out is about the user segmentation, right? So I believe like your user segmentation was good, where you spoke about the language your app will be in. But I thought the, so we are talking about an age group of seven to 50. So breaking them down, breaking the user persona in grades is good, but I don't think again, so when you break down the user persona, right? Uh, you want to have a quite distinct characteristics from one segment to another, right? So from an age group of seven to 15, again, as far as I know, I don't think the kids are that different. And at least if I talk about today's world, most of the kids are tech savvy with a smartphone and I don't think the segmentation was that much falling into place and other probably other ways to segment the user group might have been disability right so are we talking about kids with some visual disability then the way you are building the app the pain points might change so these were some of the nuances probably to uh, uh, work on but overall it was a brilliant discussion you actually covered almost all of the points and it was almost near perfect yeah yeah, and the thing so that which you could have done is I think um, you did not clarify or define the scope that well. So when we spoke about kids, like communication app for kids, right? You got uh, bogged down or tied to school going kids. I believe I, you asked me, I said school going kids, but school going kids does not mean that they'll be using the app only for uh, academia or something, right? To communicate with the teachers, etc. So it can have various use cases. So that was a, yeah, something which, I believe you did not explore much and you just assumed uh, that, yeah. So kids might be using the app to communicate with their loved ones or with their grandparents, parents. It, I mean, uh, grandparents or their relatives. It can be an app to bring all, all of them close, right? So yeah, there can be a lot of use cases. So I feel there was, that was a bit open-ended. So uh, otherwise, yeah, you the user personal, customer journey map, solutioning, et cetera, all were really good, but yeah. Defining the scope and clarifying and narrowing down the scope, I believe, is the most 
important aspect which could have been better but yeah agree yeah so anything you would like to add so that probably yeah, i might have missed something which you want to talk about no i think thanks a lot for covering those uh, great insight and i did realize uh, some later point of time when i was you know i could have covered this i could have covered that so yeah and thanks for highlighting those particular things cool yeah great so great yeah yeah hope for more such collaboration sessions and thanks a lot for having me here all the best all the best yeah. thank you thank you viewers who have been watching it so uh, feel free to comment below uh, how this mock interview went and yeah also if you want more for such mock interviews uh, feel free to comment over here so thank you again